Let's turn to Domenico Lombardi. Dr. Lombardi has represented Italy on the boards of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, and he joins us now from the Brookings Institution, where he is a senior fellow. Dr. Lombardi, welcome to Bottom Line. Thanks for coming on today. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, sir, as I just mentioned on Wednesday, measures to recapitalize the Eurozone's banks and to increase the size of the Eurozone's bailout fund are expected to be unveiled. What other remedies need to be announced? Well, the remedies uh, certainly show that uh, Europe is finally moving in the right direction. Uh, however, uh, there is a sense that uh, the remedies that will be announced will still fall short of the shocking of response that is uh, required in order to stabilize market expectations. Right now, the priority is to ring fence larger sovereigns of the euro area like Spain and especially Italy. Italy has to borrow from the financial markets about 250 billion euro a year. I mean, this is really a huge amount compared to the uh, current available lending capacity of the European Rescue Fund and also of the IMF for what matters. So there is really a need for uh, putting a large sum of money on the table in order to stabilize uh, market expectations. But I doubt that in the end we're going to uh, yeah. see that, uh, you know, uh, on Wednesday. Uh, sir, how critical is it that Greece's private bondholders take deeper losses to lighten the country's debt load? And should such a deal be voluntary as opposed to mandated? Uh, given how things uh, stand right now, there is no doubt that Greece is going to go through a default. The only issue is whether it's going to be an orderly default that is arrange, arranged in sort of cooperation with the private sector, or it's going to be a disorderly default. Clearly, you know, it is desirable, and all the efforts are on having uh, Greece to go through an orderly default by having investors to accept a voluntary haircut uh, of uh, some 50 percent of, of their bond holding. And, uh, of course, at the same time, you need uh, uh, to put in place, uh, you know, a strategy of uh, recapitalization for the European financial institutions to avoid that uh, uh, the uh, Greek uh, default uh, sparks further contagion and panic yep. throughout the euro area. Yep. Uh, right now, uh, the, it's important to fix the Greek situation because the Greek crisis has shown so far to have spillovers that go well beyond, uh, you know, the uh, country-owned yeah. boundaries. And, uh, uh, and therefore, you know, a resolution of the Greek crisis is one of the pillars that the Europeans are trying to, uh, to fix. Right. And right now, the debt-to-GDP ratio stands at, uh, uh, is projected to reach 140 percent. Right. Clearly, there cannot be any rebound for the Greek economy as long as this ratio stays so high. Well, Dr. Lombardi, is the European Central Bank's primary role at this point to buy the bonds of financially weakened governments on the open market in an effort to keep bond prices up? The European Central Bank, uh, since uh, this summer, has been involved in uh, sustaining uh, the bond prices of uh, the Italian, uh, Spanish and other distressed economy of the euro area. Clearly, uh, the ECB at this stage is the only credible actor that may stabilize a market, that may stabilize expectations, because it has got unlimited firepower. The problem is of a more of a political nature, because the Germans uh, oppose any um, more uh, significant involvement from the side of the ECB. However, if uh, you know things uh, turn out to uh, to get worse. Uh, in the end, the ECB option will be the only one viable and, uh, uh, you know, that can be activated immediately. Uh, how much pressure is there on Italy to institute new reforms so that it isn't the next Eurozone country to be bailed out following Greece, Ireland and Portugal? And they're three of the weakest members of the Eurozone. And secondarily, could the Eurozone handle a bailout of Italy, the region's third largest economy? Uh, well, this is a very good point. There is a lot of pressure on the Italians uh, to uh, come up with a credible uh, and viable program of reforms. They have already uh, passed two budget supplementary uh, plans. 
uh, which have been largely ineffective, and especially they do not tackle the uh, deep-seated problem of the Italian economy that is a very low growth. Clearly, when you have low growth and a very high public debt, and you project this, uh, uh, you know, into the long term, uh, market investors doubt about the long-run ability of the economy to service its debt. So this is why it's important, and the European partners are pressuring uh, the government to do yeah. more on the growth front. And in fact, as we speak, the Italian cabinet is meeting to discuss emergency measures right. uh, that uh, ideally might boost growth. I doubt that we're going to see any uh, concrete um, outcome, just because the uh, political situation at this moment is very yes. volatile, very fragile, and therefore it's yeah. going to be difficult for this government to implement uh, those uh, sets of reforms. Dr. Lombardi, that segues nicely into my last uh, question. We have about a minute left. How much pressure is on French President Nicolas Sarkozy and the German Chancellor Angela Merkel to get the rest of the European Union to follow along with their proposals? This weekend, uh, President Sarkozy said it's important for Germany and France to speak with one voice. Uh, there is actually a lot of uh, disagreement between the two European leaders, uh, despite appearances. Uh, clearly, uh, the French are extremely worried, and they are well aware that if Italy falls, then France is going to be next. There are already, uh, you know, doubts that uh, France will be able to maintain its AAA status, especially if uh, larger sovereigns like Italy and Spain will need, uh, you know, some uh, bailout packages from the European Rescue Fund. Yes. This will trigger, uh, you know, uh, contingent liabilities uh, on uh, the euro area member states, including France, right. and therefore its uh, top rating will be untenable. So, uh, okay. President Sarkozy is deeply aware of these vulnerabilities. He's trying to push the Germans. So far, he has not succeeded in doing that. Dr. Domenico Lombardi, a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution, joining us from Washington. Dr. Lombardi, it's a pleasure. Thanks so much. It was my pleasure. Thanks for having me.